Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the uh, Let Us Reason video series. And uh, we are still uh, continuing our discussions uh, uh, on unpacking the doctrine of Tawheed uh, according to the teaching of the Quran and showing that from the Quran, Allah is not one in person and one in essence, as our Muslim friends would want us to believe, or they would want to believe as well, because the Quran actually is showing that Allah has a spirit who is distinct from him, and yet at the same time is co-equal to Allah himself. Yes. With me again here is Sam. Sam, mm -hmm. as always, it's a, a pleasure and yes. a delight to have mm -hmm. you, brother, on the show. And by the way, briefly tell people how they can get a hold of your yes. teachings, and I know you've been doing live lately. And how can they support you as well? Yes, they can find me on YouTube by going to my YouTube channel, and hopefully they'll subscribe and watch the videos. It's Shamunian, S-H-A-M-O-U-N-I-A-N. Please subscribe and, and you know hit the like button on the videos so we can spread it for the glory of Jesus Christ. I also started a blog called AnsweringIslamBlog.wordpress.com, which I regularly update with articles to equip Christians with the ammunition they need to glorify Jesus Christ to the Muslims as well as various groups because I also have a passion in reaching Joe's witnesses. So please pray for me and my children and if you contact me through either medium, then I can tell you how you can support us financially because we do need the support to do this for the glory of Jesus Christ because he's worthy and we're not doing it for money, we're doing it to proclaim the glory and the majesty and beauty of Jesus Christ. So Thank you, my thank brother. You, yes. So what, what are we going to talk about today? Yes. <clears throat> well, today we're going to culminate the series we began on what the Quran says about the Spirit. And again, I just want to make clear, I'm not trying to prove that the Spirit of the Quran is the same Spirit revealed in the Holy Scriptures. I don't believe that. I believe the Quran is a counterfeit concocted by Satan, where Satan inspired Muhammad to preach a false Jesus, a false spirit, a false gospel, and present a false God to mislead people from the true God. My aim is to show the Muslims who do believe in the Quran that the Quran does not teach Tawheed. So I just want to be clear. I don't want people to think that I believe, hey, the Holy Spirit of the Quran is the Holy Spirit of the Bible. To me, that's blasphemous. That is true. It's a counterfeit, a satanic counterfeit, trying to replace the true spirit with a counterfeit one. So may the Lord Jesus save Muslims from this satanic counterfeit and bring them into the truth of the gospel that he proclaimed Amen. <clears throat> so they can be saved. Now, with that said, we have demonstrated that the Quran does teach that Allah's spirit Though distinct from Allah, subordinate to Allah is fully God because he can do things that only God can do and he's a person. He can appear as a man, which by the way is interesting because Muslims want to tell you that it is beneath the glory and majesty of Allah to appear as a man or become a man. However, Allah's own spirit, whom he breathes out, who comes out of him, who's part of him, can appear as a man. So if it's beneath the dignity of Allah to appear as a man, then what are they saying about the Spirit of Allah? That the Spirit of Allah did something that was inglorious, something that was shameful, but for the Spirit to appear as a man, and yet Allah won't appear as a man, are you saying that the Spirit is beneath Allah, even though He's inseparable from Allah, so a part of Allah does something inglorious to shame Allah? So that's another problem, another dilemma for the Muslims. What I want to focus right now in this particular session is to show from the Quran that the Spirit cannot be Gabriel because the Spirit cannot be an angelic creature because that's what they'll tell you. Muslim scholars will tell you the Spirit is the angel Gabriel. We're going to prove from the Quran that cannot be the case. So if you don't mind, if you can go to chapter 16, verse 2 of the Quran and read for us right. what 16, verse 2 says about the Spirit's relationship to the angels. And I'm going to be reading like uh, from Pechthel, for instance, and it says, He, speaking of Allah, sends down the <coughs> angels with the Spirit That's right. of His command, unto whom He will of His bondmen, saying, Warn mankind that there is no God save me, so keep your duty unto me. Now, did you catch it? He sends the angels with the Spirit by his command. In other words, Allah orders and commands the angels and the Spirit to come down. So this again shows two things. The angels are a distinct group, a distinct category from the Spirit. That's correct. Because if the Spirit was an angel, why exclude him, differentiate him from the angels? Why not include him in that category? The fact that it says the, the angels with the Spirit shows they're not the same category being. But it also shows that the Spirit is subject to Allah because Allah orders the Spirit, 
commands the Spirit. So the Spirit can only come down when Allah orders him, though the Spirit is breathed out by Allah and inseparable from him. So those are the two facts we establish from this passage. Now, this is not the only passage. There are other passages that affirm that the Spirit is distinct from the angels and that both angels and the Spirit have to obey the commands of Allah. Can you go to chapter 70, verse 4 of the Quran? Chapter 70, verse 4 reads as follows. To him, this is Arbery's translation, to him the angels and the Spirit mount up in a day whereof the measure is 50,000 years. So again, we have the angels on one side and the Spirit differentiated from them, right? That's correct. The angels and the Spirit. Now again, if the Spirit is an angel, then he should be part of this category, this group of angels, because it says angels in general, not some angels, angels as a whole, and yet the Spirit is distinguished from them, showing the Spirit is not an angel, but different from them. Now this, again, is not the only passage. Let's go to 7838. 7838 uh, reads, On a day when the angels and the spirits stand arrayed, they speak not, save in him whom the uh, benef uh, beneficent alloweth and who speaketh right. So again, angels and the spirit, two different categories. The angels one side, the spirit another side, and again affirms that the spirit with the angels is subordinate, subject to Allah. Now, Angels are creatures, so by their very nature, they're subject to Allah. But here's what's ironic. The Spirit is breathed out by Allah, so he's an eternal part of Allah. He's not part of creation. That's correct. And yet at the same time, the Spirit is subject to Allah. It almost sounds like there's a hierarchy within the Godhead of Islam. And our Muslim friends are up in arms when we show that Jesus the Son submitted to the will of the Father. Yeah, or the Holy Spirit in the Bible is also right. subject to the Father and the Son. So now That's here right. we have a hierarchy within the Godhead of Islam. The Spirit breathed out by Allah, so he's an eternal, inseparable part of him, not part of creation, creates, gives life, appears as a man, can speak and be spoken to, and yet he is subject to the command of Allah. And yet we're told that Islam teaches absolute pure monotheism. Now, that's not the only passage. So far, three passages, right? Correct. Let's go for a fourth one. Chapter 97, verse four. 97 verse 4 reads as follows, the angels and the spirit, here we go again, Distinction. the angels and the spirit descend therein by the permission of their Lord, by the leave of their Lord, mm. with all decrees. So again, we find the same thing that we saw in the other passages. The spirit, one side, angels on another side. They're not the same category or class of being, they're distinct, proving the spirit cannot be an angel. But at the same time, the spirit, like the angels, has to come down by permission of Allah. So he's subject to the will, command, and order of Allah. That's right. I don't think you get any clearer than this, or do you? There's actually another passage that's even more explicit. Chapter 17, verse 85. And this one is very interesting, by the way, 1785. And here is the setting. <clears throat> Muhammad was asked, actually, by people, tell us, who is the spirit? Yeah, and it says ar the spirit. That's right. Not just the spirits in general. So Sam, this would have been the perfect moment right. for the prophet of Islam to say, it's Gabriel. Exactly. Why is everybody, you know, <laughs> Where's the debate? That's right. So here's what it reads. They are asking thee concerning the spirit. Say, the spirit is by command of my Lord and of knowledge ye have been vouchsafed but little. Let's read the Arbery translation. They will question thee concerning the spirit. Say, the spirit is of the bidding of my Lord. You have been given of knowledge nothing except wow. a little. So wait, again, the spirit is subject to the command of Allah. And when he's asked the identity of the spirit, he says, we only know a little about the spirit. In other words, don't ask too much about the spirit's identity because we don't know. Muhammad doesn't know. Like you said, the perfect opportunity for Muhammad to have said Gabriel, he didn't. He said, we only know a little about the Spirit, so stop probing about the identity of the Spirit. End of story. If a Muslim wants to insist the Spirit is Gabriel, that means he knows more than his own prophet because his own prophet, when asked, says, we don't know much about the Spirit. Now let's put the icing of the cake to end this particular aspect of the Tawheed dilemma. Not only did you see <clears throat> those passages where the angels are distinguished from the Spirit, or where Muhammad says that when it comes to the Spirit, we don't know much about him. We have a passage in which we have Allah distinguished from the angels. Go to chapter 89, and if you can. Chapter 89, verses 21 to 22. 89. 21 to 22. 
21. And see what it says there. To 22. And uh, Bechthold? Yes, fly. All right. What does it say? And we will go there right now, and I'll tell you. Here's what it says. Nay, but when the earth is ground to atoms, grinding, grinding, and thy Lord shall come with angels, rank on rank. Safan, Safa. And know, actually, basically. the word Safan was also used in 7838, where the spirit and angels will stand in ranks. Now, which Muslim would deny that their Lord, thy Lord, Muhammad's Lord, is not an angel? Because here it says, thy Lord with the angels. Two That's different right. categories, right? Exactly, exactly. But when the same language is used of the Spirit, the angels and the Spirit, the Spirit and the angels, why then would they assume that the Spirit is an angel when clearly the Spirit is distinguished from all angels in the same way that Allah is distinguished from all angels? Not only that, but there is one verse, for instance, where it says, Who is the enemy of Allah, his angels? Gabriel, you know, Michael. Hey, Michael. I mean, you have like different categories yes. that are being distinct. So, no debate, as far as the Quran is concerned, to sum up, the Spirit is not a created angelic being. The Spirit is distinguished from all angels. The Spirit is breathed out from Allah, so He's an eternal, inseparable part of Allah. The Spirit is subject to Allah. The Spirit creates and gives life like Allah does, and the Spirit can appear as a man, can speak and be spoken to. In other words, the Quran affirms the Spirit is an eternal, divine person, inseparable from Allah. Amen, brother. I think uh, uh, hopefully our uh, viewers, uh, uh, you know, have uh, got the point so far. If, if you're a Muslim watching us and we really uh, enjoy having you, we appeal to you to go and examine these very passages that we just shared. And now don't go and read a commentary that was written 300 and 400 and 700 years after the Quran was revealed, supposedly, because everything that you are believing in comes from men. Mere men who are telling you what you ought to think and how you ought to think. We want you to use what God has given you, the gift of logic, the gift of reasoning. Uh, God has given us a brain to be able to utilize in issues like this. And we want you to go examine it for yourself, see the contradictions from then within the teaching itself. You're told one thing about when Allah is distinct from angels, but yet you're told another when the same kind of uh, formula, if you wish, is used in these passages. And if you are someone who is working with Muslims, hopefully, by the grace of God, you'll find these are very helpful as yet another tool to utilize. And we want to clarify one thing. We do not use the Quran because we believe, me and Sam, or others who will use the Quran as an inspired book sent by God, not at all. It's a historical document. Muslims believe in it, and we would like to open their eyes to the truth from within their books so that they can go to the real truth. That's the Word of God, and that's the Bible. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also, hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International, and together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.